All right, what up? It's November 20th, I think. It's been a second yet again, always taking month long breaks. We're here with some differentials. We have the new limited slip 346 and we have the old open 325. We're gonna open it up, see what the bearings look like, make sure those look okay. I was scared by the little bit of play in this, but there's almost none and everybody seems to be assuring me that it's no big deal. So as long as the bearings look okay, this diff was pretty dry when I got it, so seals should be good. Pulling the output flanges, I'm gonna replace all the seals in there, obviously just because I'm in there. We're gonna take off this really ugly red cover, and instead of needing to take the time to get it sandblasted, I'm just gonna use the semi beat up one from my old one. Kinda cool just to keep an old part, and um, you guys know what the rest of the car looks like, so it's okay to have a little crusty one. Replacement parts here. We got new clutches for the LSD. So when we tested the breakaway torque, I wasn't super stoked with how well it was holding up. So it's out, we're just gonna do that easy enough. Seals for insides of these guys, as well as these for those, and this for the speed sensor. We got new crush washers for all eight, I think, of these, and new plugs for the back of this. And that's it. So time to dig in and see what's up. See if we can make a mess. Okay, so apparently this diff is dry. Okay, well, don't need that up. Just open her up. So here's the inside. So cool, right? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah. One just broke off. The head broke off. It looks like there's enough meat taken off that I should be able to slip the cover off and then maybe just get a layers on it. Good news is the nut that broke off. This one, bottom side snapped right off. It is slipping right past it. So that's good. Okay. All right, so now is the important part to take very careful care. Very careful care. Put everything back in the right order. I'll show you that right there. It's the bolt that broke off. Should be able to get it out, hopefully. 
Alright, first is this little spacer. Just leave that right on top of this, which is something. It seem to be right towards that. You know, before we keep going, I'm gonna try to get this broken that out. I think we got it. A little bit of extra PB. Some slow turning. Broke off right there. So next up, we got the spacer. And we got another spacer. And we got a clutch. We got a big old hunk of metal. Okay, and then we got the spider gears. Carp, I'm just wearing it. And we got some more stuff. I definitely know what I'm doing. So let's just do a little bit of this. Come on, baby. Oh, okay. So I didn't notice when I removed it that the spider gear assembly came out with one of the dog, old dog ears and clutch discs. And it does not look very good. Another spacer. Just a cute little spacer. What do we got? What the fuck is that? We got a husky pick, another one broke. Shout out to husky. It's a fat boy. I think that might be the one we're not putting back in. We got this little guy. I already forgot how it was in there. Okay. Well, I never know what I'm doing. I want to take a film photo, but I can't pick the camera up right now. All right, I'm gonna dunk this fucker in some mineral spirits. That's great. All right, replacing these dudes inside of the bearings. There we go. Two new ones of these. Boom. Okay. So, order of operations here. First one is this little spacer, and you can see these two little oiling grooves. After that, I guess this is considered a spring and has a little bit of bevel on the edge and then this has little oiling grooves there so for this when you place it in the oiling grooves face down so when you look at this first Belleville spring you're supposed to install it with the small spring radius down and the large spring radius up focus so you got to find the bevel small radius down large radius up so like that and then this the oiling grooves face up so it'll be like that. Remember? Cool. Spacer, oiling groups down, spring, small radius down, large radius up. And then oiling group disc grooves up. Since we're doing the three clutch upgrade, what we're gonna do is we get rid of this huge spacer. This is considered a spring again too, and just like the small spring, small diameter down, large diameter up. So you find that bevel. Small diameter down, large diameter up. Beautiful. Okay, so next is a new dog ear plate. Go straight in with the grooves. Available on Amazon Prime. And then here, we have our clutch discs. They've been soaking in differential oil. As the instructions say, this prevents burning out in the break-in period. So that is what's next. So I'm gonna grab one of those. It's gonna be cray messy. Hope I soaked it long enough. Didn't say how long, but baby, they're wet. Oh, they're wet, baby. She's in. Next up, we got another dog ear plate and another clutch disc. So next up, another dog ear plate. And then we have another 
your clutch disc. It's been soaking in fluid. All right, next up is spider gear assembly. You quick hit this with some mineral spurts. Well, the spider gear teeth have definitely seen better days. That's not good. Basically, it goes in this piece like this, and then this piece goes in like that. And these gears mesh into the clutch plates. Next up, we will do the center pieces of these spider gears. So these, just like disassembly, Got these two pins, go together like that. I'll just do two pieces. Okay. So now I've got these top part of the spider gears cleaned up. This one, a little bit of pitting on some of them, but not as bad. Um, and then this top part. That piece first, down, and then this one in after. Here's some up. Great. After that, we got a clutch disc, third one, and the final dog ear plate too. In. After that we have the large diameter spring. This last one, top side, we install with a large spring radius down and a small spring radius up. So large down, small up, and then we have the final of the three just like on the bottom side. This small one with the dog ear with the oiling grooves. The oiling grooves will face down. Then we have the small spring, again like the large spring, small diameter up, large down, and then this guy also with its little oiling grooves. And those oiling grooves will go upward. Brush detailing on the grooves, getting all the old shit out of there. Small spring up, large radius down. And finally that last spacer with oil, oil grooves that face upward. Cover. Apparently lining this up is the hard part. I think I'm gonna already agree. All right, got a little figuring out to do here. And putting the carrier cover back down, I just kind of had to like line obviously those top discs up. So everything with like the oil groove and the spring, all those three little pieces lined up. And then to push it down, it was kind of like chick, 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 chick back and forth. It went really slow, really tight, but I think it's about as close as it needs to be now before I put all the new Allen nuts in with medium Loctite and then go in a star pattern to suck it all down in and then torque to 30 foot pounds. But now we're gonna put eight of these in with some medium Permatex thread locker. Just doing not much there. That will do ya. All right, so we got this fucking cover back on there. These are all hand tightened, tightened it down. It wasn't flush when you first put it on, apparently with the springs or new clutches or whatever, but once you hand tighten them down all in a star pattern, it flattens out. So now I'm gonna go through with this and a torque wrench, torquing with 30 foot pounds. I got the Loctite on each of them, and I should be good. Next up after this, we'll be replacing the seals and those. So I got the cover off of the old diff. Lots of dirt. That one's chilling down there with the new diff's old cover. Clean all this shit out with mineral spirits. Trying to best I can on this side. By the way, that's in. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. All right, it's all back together. There's no gasket in between these two. It's all clean inside. Measured each side spacer. 
and I don't know if they go in like quarter millimeters or not but this one was anywhere between like 1.75 and almost 2 and this one was consistently 2 millimeters but other than that got this in new seal on that which is good new seals on each of these obviously those are in the seals in the center of these that you have to pound out and then in this worked great my 46 millimeter which is used also for the front wheel bearings it's convenient that that worked out but yeah hope i can figure the lash out then i can get it all sealed up and it'll be good to go new clutches in this lsd and looking way way better without the red cover not bad all right guys and one gal so we're going to check the backlash of the diff got this sweet digital indicator off of amazon prime specifically for this i think i'm doing this right tell me if i'm doing it wrong you just have to put the indicator on one of the teeth as flat as you can in here have it zeroed and then do a little bit of this play here it's like hardly feeling any and i'm getting that same 35 thousandths of an inch i guess 0 0.003 So that's pretty good. How do I know? One guy on YouTube in the comments, but I assume that's pretty good. So next thing we're gonna do is I got some yellow gear marking compound, because that blue stuff, the Prussian blue, was working well enough, but couldn't quite see it on dark gears as well. So this should show up a lot better. So we're gonna try that out. And another thing I was seeing on mine too that I was not doing that can help to see where the pinion and ring gear are meshing is having someone put pressure on the ring gear as the pinion is spinning because that way when the gears mesh together it's pushing more pain away and you can see where the gears are marking because I was having a really hard time on the drive and coast sides where it was meshing. So we're gonna figure that out next. So yeah, here we go. All right, we're gonna give her a spin here. All right, so, oh, to the leg, right, okay. Go yeah. ahead, yep. Keep going. Okay, now back the other way. Keep going. Okay, back the other way. On the coast side here, it does seem like it's getting way too close to the toe. But then on the drive side, you seem to be pretty well centered. Which is good, but also confuses me, both from top to bottom. I think that looks pretty good. Everyone online seemed to read that if you were too far in one direction, the other side should also be too far in one direction. But also, I saw some literature on one that said the drive side is most important, but the coast side could also be favoring the toe a little bit, which is what I'm seeing here. I don't know. I'm going to text some people. Let's see. But at least you can see it better now. Uh, so I determined. Lash and everything look good. Everything's great. Time to seal it up. So I got it vertical right now. I put a little bit of extra oil on the bearings and inside the LSD casing just because. So I'm now applying Toyota OEM-ish gasket maker for like gear oil stuff. Just says to apply a thin coat on your edge. So I got this, the gasket, and the cover. Place the gasket on here to hopefully prolong this drying process for a sec. I'm gonna leave it vertical when it's all together and let it cure for its day and then put oil in it. Pretty serious paper gasket here. It's pretty dinky. Nice. Look how clean the inside of this bad boy is. Mineral spirits on a really stinky, yucky cover came through. It's still a little whatever, but you guys know the outside of the car, so. This is from the diff that was on the car too, so. Kind of cool to retain a piece. Hey, Cat. All right, so we got the whole, <laughs> we got the whole outside painted with our ASIN, right, Cat? Cat's scratch your face on boxes, so we're gonna throw this on here. We got all of our bolts ready. These are uh, ever built from Home Depot with uh, some OEM pressure washers. Got the right way here. Something like that. Dub's here. Hello. Are you recording? Yeah. Really big spider in your room. Really? Yeah. How big? Pretty big. This big. Smells good. 
Yeah. Intestinal. A brake cleaner. Mm. Brake cleaner and ass. Good. Nice. So we got all the bolts nice and snugged up. I'm just gonna give it until at least tomorrow. I think the packaging on the fluid says 12 to 16 hours. Just have them all snugged up, paper gasket in there. This is fucking sweet though. Clean looking diff. So tomorrow or Sunday, we will torque all these bolts up, fill it with fluid, and we can reassemble the rear end. It's exciting. So. Cool. Nice. Flatter.